Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video we have one older laptop, Fujitsu Siemens Livebook S7110. A while ago I picked up some older Tatch, which probably will finish in some landfill, but I've decided to do something. At the first look, this laptop is looking good, except some scratches and a few small cracks, and the case has a trace like this laptop was forgotten outside in rain which is most noticeable on the display and on the case. This is a Windows XP design machine, with Intel Centrino Duo CPU. Also, I got this laptop without a power adapter, without RAM and without hard disk, which is very expected when you pick up some trash. Anyway, I only have some parts for these older laptops. So first, I took RAM and a SUS power adapter. The ASUS power adapter is the same as the Fujitsu Siemens adapters. I mean the connector is the same, the voltages and etc. And to my surprise, this machine turned it on, which I really didn't expect. I have done some tests to check the laptop. And then I mount the disk that I'm using for testing and install the legendary Windows XP. Now, when I was sure that this machine is basically working, I moved to in-depth cleaning and also checking the hardware. And a few words about this machine. This laptop is released back in 2007, a period between Windows XP and the unfamous Windows Vista. The Centrino Duo CPU is belong to an era when dual-core and quad-core CPUs started to spread widely on the market. This laptop also has a square-shaped display with a 4.3 aspect ratio. Also, this was the era when the square-shaped displays started to be replaced with a widescreen resolution, like 1610 or 169, a transition period from one type to another type of hardware, which is present today. So basically here we have a part of history. And the disassembly is complete. Now I move to cleaning. This laptop is looking pretty fine and clean from the inside, which I didn't really expect, but we still have some dust from the inside. And when I took a closer look, I found corrosion around some components. Fortunately, the corrosion has not caused some other problems while I test the laptop. To clean the laptop, I use the standard things as always such as a few soft brushes, cotton buds, 96% isopropyl alcohol, compressed air and soft napkins. Now the display. To clean the display, I use a mixture of regular glass cleaner and isopropyl alcohol. The both are powerful enough to clean all the dirt, but also will not cause any damage to the display. Cleaning the case is going a bit differently. Here, except the basic cleaning things, I used a polish wax. This is a car cosmetic product, but it's doing a great job to fix some minor scratches on the plastic. The deeper scratches are a bit covered, but not fully. Anyway, after this, the plastic will look much better and fresh, and it will be smoother. Now I move to repair the plastic cover from the palm rest, 
I mean the plastic right above the keyboard. The plastic has already a little bit broken. And while disassembling, I make these cracks a bit larger. This is a common problem with many older laptops. Very thin plastic, which is easy breakable and tricky to remove from the case. To stick the plastic, I used a super glue gel. The gel version of the super glue is drying slower, but is more flexible and won't leave any marks. After the glue gets dry, I do some taping and then spray painting, just to make the plastic look a bit better. And finally, all the parts are checked, clean and ready for assembling. While assembling, I made some upgrades. And the first upgrade is the CPU. So instead of 32-bit Intel Centrino T2300s, I will go with Intel Core 2 Duo T7200s. The T7200s is a 64-bit CPU and it's a little bit faster, which means it will get a little bit better performance than before. So before I place the final covers, let's do some upgrades. And the next upgrade is going to be the RAM. Here I will go with 4GB in total. 4GB is also the maximum that this laptop supports. And as the final upgrade, I will add 120GB SSD. This is an older Toshiba SSD, which actually left from other projects but it's good for testing and it's good for something like this. And finally, the laptop is ready. Now again, I reinstall the Windows, the Windows drivers, and everything is working just pretty fine. The Windows XP is incredibly fast, especially using SSD, and it's a real pleasure to use it and mess around and see how the things are going in super fast mode. The Windows XP is pretty outdated, but it's still great if you want to play some older games, try some older apps and etc. Actually, it's like a time machine. The next operating system is Windows 7. Here the things are much different. In Windows 7, I was able to install the latest Mozilla and browse the web without any problem. Watching videos or movies is possible but using some lower resolution, like 360p or 480p. Some of the higher resolutions like 720p is playable, but with small luck sometimes. Now the gaming. Gaming on this laptop is possible, but only to play older games. Actually, there are hundreds and hundreds of older games that can be played here, especially like games that have a native support under the 4-3 aspect ratio. These games are looking much, much better when you play it on some older laptop or monitor. That's because the resolution, the display ratio and the graphics are made for something like this, 
I mean made for low pixel and a low resolution displays. So if you want to get a full experience and the charm of the older games, you should try something like this. Well, and this is all about this Fujitsu Siemens Lifebook. And I'm very glad because this machine is working again. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give some inspiration and ideas to back some stuff in function again. Also, if you like my work, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.